Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about monopolies and the channel fireball monopoly over the Grand Prix and now being renamed Magic Fest. Just like how we renamed Fat Packs into bundles and then we threw in an extra booster pack, I guess, to make it different. The renaming of Magic Fest is pretty much a PR stunt. Now, Channel Fireball has a monopoly on events. They are the only one allowed to run events. So if they choose not to go to your country, they choose not to go to your city, well, you are out of luck because there's no Magic Fest. Now let's focus on how they're abusing the power. Well, before I forget, things like cheating and stealing. So if you cheat in Magic the Gathering, you do not go to jail. You just get a slap on the wrist and like Alex Buccini and off you go. And then after a year, you come back to cheat some more. If you, I don't know, inside trade in MTG Finance, you are encouraged and actually you brag about it. All your sources, all hundred of them that you talk to every week and all everyone inside trading. But in real life, if you inside traded on stocks, you would go to jail. But in magic, it is not only encouraged, it is you get to brag about how, how awesome you are and then you get to write articles behind a paywall for all the lemmings to buy your articles. Now, monopolies in real life, there is a legal, I took a course, it's called antitrust. And the concept is monopolies are not good for the customers and they're not good for the workers. In this case, the artists are boycotting Magic Fest because they feel like they're being, they are being mistreated or more specifically, they are being treated poorer than they were at one time. And this is what happens when you don't have competition. If you had a competitor also offer Grand Prix and maybe they offered the artist a stipend, they offered them uh, the list of things that Channel Fireball took away from these poor people is like, why would you do this? Like one of the biggest demands was they want a larger table. How expensive is it to give them like two tables? Like, is that really like something that is uneconomical to give an artist? Uh, or a locker to put their stuff in. I mean, some of the demands they have are just so like, it's like, okay, why don't Channel Fireball say yes to it? But that's what you have when you have a monopoly. You have the customers who are paying more and more for these quote magic fest. You, hmm, I'm gonna make another video. I know where the money is going. I put one and one together and I got two. The magic, the money is going to Weds. I saw an advertisement for Weds at Channel Fireball and I posted it on like Facebook or something, maybe on my YouTube. And they were running advertisements right after he was injured uh, he actually didn't go to that event. I think it was Providence for Weds and Tolarian Community College. So they pay for their stuff. Why can't they pay for an artist? Why? Like, do people want to see Weds more than they want to see an artist to get their artwork signed? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I don't know what dimension I would have that that would be true in. Maybe if everyone was a junior bacon cheeseburger, they would be like, oh, cool. Let's go see wet. But anyway, back to my point, the artists, which in this case are employees in quotation mark, because we all know that no one's an employee. The judges are not, quote, employees. The artists are not employees. They are classified as vendors now, and they're no, no longer even guests, are being mistreated. Now, I agree with this. This was the same hypothesis I had about Christine Sprankles, the cosplayer that unsleeved media. I think, you know, I would disagree with him on. So eventually we got into the same agreement, but initially I disagree with. I think Christine should have been paid. And I think that she had to turn to Patreon because she had to get money. And that's totally, uh, cosplay is very expensive. And if you look at cosplayers who are not magic with 100,000, I'm looking at this uh, very... Uh, what was it? Uh, fake Grand Order cosplayer. And all she would do is Fake Grand Order. Or Fire Emblem Heroes. Duh. Fire, well, she did both. So she was doing Fire Emblem Heroes and Fake Grand Order. As you guys know, those are my two favorite mobile games that I would spend a lot of money on. And she has it down. I mean, she's probably making 60, 70K 
a year based on her Patreon, selling print and stuff. But that's because she has 120,000 followers on Facebook and a lot of Patreon support. And Magic, I mean, if Christine can't make it and she's on the front page of Wizard of Coast and she's the one who gets to spoil Averson, which was the Chase Mythic at the time, and she gets she actually got to keep the card, right? And that would have been that's a very valuable card. I probably would pay two thousand dollars for that card. The giant oversized Averson that was in the the escape room or something. I mean that card was that event. And she was the cosplayer for that. She cosplayed as Averson at that event. So they didn't pay her. They treated her very poorly. I know she'll never say it, but honestly it's pretty embarrassing when you look at what other cosplayers get paid to attend conventions. And now they're cutting the artist. These poor artists just trying to sell their play mats and their dice bags and prints. And my gosh, it's terrible. Like, you guys got to tip them. Like, we have to tip them because otherwise it wouldn't be worth it for them to go to these events. So what to do? If you're an artist, contact this dude. If you're not an artist, uh, contact Channel Fireball and Wizards of the Coast. Here's their emails. I doubt this is going to really change stuff. Uh, Wizards of the Coast is all about saving money, as is Channel Fireball. And this is the true danger of Monopoly. I can talk about the true danger of like inside trading. I can talk about the true danger of cheating. So if you cheat and you're Alex Pacini and you get caught cheating... Do you go to jail? If you went to play at a casino, going to jail would be the best outcome of cheating. They're going to break your legs. But in Magic, they welcome you back. They give you a hug. Hello, Alex. Welcome back. Oh, you cheated again? Don't worry about it, Alex. Everyone already forgot about it because you're so awesome and amazing. So pretty much things that should not exist in regular life are things that would be heavily punished and frowned upon or encouraged. So a monopoly is actually a good thing for Magic the Gathering because customers get to pay for higher prices. The vendors slash guests slash quotation mark employees get abused some more because there's no union. And in fact, you know, let's say that the artist has value X. They can never achieve close to value X because what is the alternative? Like, is there a competing Magic Fest? No, you can't. There's no competing Magic Fest because it's, by definition, there's a monopoly. That's the whole point of a monopoly. So if you thought a monopoly was to help the customers and or quotation mark employee, I I will call them employees, right? Or like, it's very difficult. Like a judge, like I think a judge is an employee. I know we're going to call them like a volunteer, but I mean, they're working. So there, there's this group of people that do a lot for Magic that get underappreciated. And I will throw cosplayers into them because I think people... I haven't really seen any cosplays at the GP Houston's I've gone to. I don't remember any cosplays. I don't know if Christine went to that. I don't remember seeing her. But overall, there is a group of people who are not hardcore Magic players. And these people are segmented and kind of isolated into like, oh, artists. It's nice that we have artists, but if we don't take our deal, goodbye. Cosplayer, we're not going to pay you. Goodbye. But the one person they will pay. Or, sorry, professor. I meant not pay. I mean, you would get spot. So the definition of what I think getting sponsored is and being, you know, having to say, oh, I received this free product. I received a free plane ticket. I received a free hotel. Wizard of Coast classifies that as a gift. And that is a taxable gift. So for the Pro Tour, when they give you a, quote, free plane ticket, you pay taxes on the plane ticket. I don't know why we have to create this new seg topic segment for Tolarian and Wed and whoever, what other other content create quote content creator needs to come to uh, bring all the casual players to I don't know side events. 
I mean, they advertise weds on uh, Facebook ads. They paid for someone to make that ad, and they paid Facebook to post the ad. And I saw the ad. It's real. They thought that having a picture of Wedge would somehow convince a bunch of Magic players to go to their Magic Fest, or at the time it's still called GP, a Grand Prix. But they didn't think they should pay the artist. You know, if, if Wedge and Tolarin really wanted to stand side by side with the artist, they would actually just ask for the same thing. They wouldn't ask for a plane ticket stipend. They wouldn't ask for a hotel stipend. They wouldn't ask for free events and all this stuff. They would say, hey, make me a vendor. And then they would get a table and a booth and they would sell some stuff. Maybe even like for photographs. I don't know. A plur- I don't know. Maybe $5 a photo. What do you guys think? Think that's a good idea? That's a that's a joke from another video. So overall, this is the danger of a monopoly. Uh, monopolies should not actually exist uh, in America, at least. They are not considered good for the customer, and are not considered good for the employees either. So when a company like in olden days, where you had steel. And what Rockefeller, right? Was Rockefeller the railroad dude, or was he another dude? Was he oil? But if you, somebody got has a monopoly on oil, then they can pay the oil workers whatever they want them to pay. Okay, you don't want to work here? We'll get someone else to work here. Goodbye. You want to make a union? Goodbye. We'll hire some people to break your leg. Hey, customer, you don't want to pay two dollars? Well, you're not driving today. And that is Magic Fest in a nutshell. You don't want to pay that expensive $70, $80 for a Magic Fest? Goodbye. Artists, you're complaining about having a small table and you want a big table, but you, we will charge you extra for that big table? Goodbye. We'll find someone else. And that is the true danger of a monopoly. Is the customers are hurt and so are the, again, quotation mark employees. Anyway, bye guys. Oh, the only people not hurt are the junior cheeseburgers.